Dear students, Namaskar. I hope that you are all well and must be excited for today's lesson. Children, today we are going to discuss Chapter 10 of Science of Class 6, Motion and Measurement of Distances. First of all, we will recall what we have studied in our previous classes. Children, how do you come to school? What are the different means of transport? How far is your school from your house? How do you measure your height? The topics which we are going to learn today are Story of transport Different methods of measuring length of an object Standard units of measurements Measuring the length of a curved line Moving things around us Types of motion Long ago, people did not have any means of transport. They used to move only on foot and carry goods either on their back or using animals. For transport along water routes, boats were used from ancient times. To begin with, boats were simple logs of wood in which a hollow cavity could be made. Later, people learnt to put together different pieces of wood and give shapes to the boats. These shapes imitated the shapes of the animals living in water. Invention of the wheel made a great change in modes of transport. The design of the wheel was improved over thousands of years. Animals were used to pull vehicles that moved on wheels. Until the beginning of the 19th century, people still depended on animal power to transport them from place to place. The invention of steam engine introduced a new source of power. Railroads were made for steam engine driven carriages and wagons. Later came automobiles. Motorized boats and ships were used as means of transport on water. The early years of 1900 saw the development of aeroplanes. These were later improved to carry passengers and goods. Electric trains, monorail, supersonic aeroplanes and spacecraft are some of the 20th century contributions. How did people know how far they have travelled? How will you know whether you can walk all the way to your school or whether you will need to take a bus or a rickshaw to reach your school? When you need to purchase something, is it possible for you to walk to the market? How will you know the answers to these questions? It is often important to know how far a place is so that we can have an idea how we are going to reach that place. Walk, take a bus or a train, a ship, an aeroplane or even a spacecraft. Children, suppose two of your classmates always argue about the space they share on a bench. So your teacher decides to measure the length of the bench and find the center of the bench and draw a line to divide the desk into two equal parts. Now measure the length and breadth of the desk with the help of a stick. Now see how many sticks are used to measure the length of the desk. The length of the desk can also be measured by using a string or thread or our hand span. There are so many occasions when we come across a need to measure lengths and distances. The tailor needs to measure the length of the cloth to know if it is enough to stitch a kurta. A carpenter needs to measure the height and width of a cupboard to know how much wood he would need to make its door. The farmer needs to know the length and breadth or the area of his land 
to know how much seed he can sow and how much water would be needed for his crops. Suppose you are asked how tall you are. You want to tell the length of a straight line from the top of your head to the heel of your feet. How long is this room? How wide is the desk? How far is it from Delhi to Lucknow? How far away is the moon from the earth? All these questions have one thing in common. They all concern distances between two places. The two places may be close enough like the two ends of a table or they may be far apart like Jammu and Kanyakumari. Standard Units of Measurements In ancient times, the length of a foot, the width of a finger and the distance of a step were commonly used as different units of measurement. Children, do you know what is length? The distance between the first or starting point and the last point of an object is called length. The people of the Indus Valley Civilization must have used very good measurements of length because we see evidence in excavations of perfectly geometrical constructions. A cubit as the length from the elbow to the fingertips was used in ancient Egypt and was also accepted as a unit of length in other parts of the world. People also used the foot as a unit of length in different parts of the world. The length of the foot used varied slightly from region to region. People measured a yard of cloth by the distance between the end of the outstretched arm and their chin. The Romans measured with their pace or steps. In ancient India, small length measurements used were an angul or a finger or a mutti, that is fist. Even today, we can see flower sellers using their forearm as a unit of length for garlands in many towns of India. Many such body parts continue to be in use as unit of length when convenient. However, everyone's body parts could be of slightly different sizes. This must have caused confusion in measurement. In 1790, the French created a standard unit of measurement called the metric system. For the sake of uniformity, scientists all over the world have accepted a set of standard units of measurement. The system of units now used is known as the International System of Units or SI units. The SI unit of length is a meter. In taking measurement of a length, we need to take care of the following. Place the scale in contact with the object along its length. In some scales, the ends may be broken. You may not be able to see the zero mark clearly. In such cases, you should avoid taking measurements from the zero mark of the scale. You can use any other full mark of the scale, say 1, then you must subtract the reading of this mark from the reading at the other end. Correct position of the eye is also important for taking measurement. Your eye must be exactly in front of the point where the measurement is to be taken. Length can be measured with the help of a meter scale or a measuring rod. The unit of length is meter. For measuring large distances, a larger unit of length kilometer is used. One kilometer is equal to 1000 meter. For smaller distances, a smaller unit called centimeter can be used. One meter is equal to 100 centimeter. So we do need to know the correct way of measuring lengths and distances. Objects at rest. Measuring the length of a curved line. We cannot measure the length of a curved line directly by using a meter scale. 
we can use a thread to measure the length of a curved line. Put a knot on the thread near one of its ends. Now place a small portion of the thread along the line, keeping it taut using your fingers and thumb. Hold the thread at this end point with one hand. Using the other hand, stretch a little more portion of the thread along its curved line. Go on repeating this process till the other end of the curved line is reached. Make a mark on the thread where it touches the end. Now stretch the thread along a meter scale. Measure the length between the knot in the beginning and the final mark on the thread. This gives the length of the curved line. We see that measurement means the comparison of an unknown quantity with some known quantity. This known fixed quantity is called a unit. The result of a measurement is expressed in two parts. One part is a number, the other part is the unit of the measurement. For example, if the length of this room is found to be 4 meter, then 4 is the number and meter is the unit selected for the measurement. Objects at rest There are many objects around us. Some objects are in motion, whereas some objects are at rest. The objects you see here are some of the objects at rest. Now the objects which you see are the objects around us which are in motion. Types of motion There are three types of motion, rectilinear motion, circular motion and periodic motion. We see many things around us, some are stationary whereas some objects are in motion. Motion means when an object changes its position with time, we say that it is in motion. For example, a table fan, a moving car and a flying bird. Motion can be of various types. The first type of motion we are going to discuss here is rectilinear motion. When motion of an object or a person is along a straight line, this type of motion is called rectilinear motion. For example, a car moving on a straight road or march past of soldiers in a parade. Children, there is another type of motion called circular motion. When an object moves in a circular path, the motion is called circular motion. Examples of circular motion are blade of an electric fan or hands of a clock. Similarly, periodic motion is also a type of motion. When an object repeats its motion after some time, such a motion is called periodic motion. Pendulum, motion of a child on a swing and motion of strings of a guitar are examples of periodic motion. Have you observed closely the motion of a ball on the ground? Here, the ball is rolling on the ground, rotating as well as moving forward on the ground. Thus, the ball undergoes a rectilinear motion as well as rotational motion or circular motion. Recapitulation Different modes of transport are used to go from one place to another. Different means of transport have been used since ancient times like bicycle, cart, train, aeroplane, etc. In ancient times, people used length of a foot, the width of a finger, the distance of a step as units of measurement. This caused confusion and a need to develop a uniform system of measurement arose. Now we use international system of unit, SI unit. This is accepted all over the world. Meter is the unit of length in SI unit. Meter is divided into 100 equal parts and each part is called centimeter. 
motion in a straight line is called rectilinear motion. In circular motion, an object moves such that its distance from a fixed point remains the same. Motion that repeats itself after some period of time is called periodic motion. A rolling ball, when moves forward, shows rectilinear motion as well as circular motion. Children, now I am going to ask you a few questions and I hope that you all must be knowing the answers. My first question is, with the invention of wheel, dash-like means of transport were developed. And the right answer is, bicycle, bus and train. My second question is, the soldiers in a parade show dash motion. So what kind of motion do soldiers show? It is rectilinear motion. My next question, the child playing on a swing shows dash motion. And the right answer is periodic motion. My next question is, 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter. Is it true or false? And the right answer is true. The statement is true. My next question is, what do you mean by periodic motion? And the answer is, motion that repeats itself after some period of time is called periodic motion. With this, we complete our chapter and I hope that you must have listened to the chapter carefully and understood it well. Children, stay healthy. Keep learning and keep growing. Thank you so much.